folks, we're doing some Spanish mackerel trolling out here dealing. We got ourselves a double header. Now we got a double header on. Oh, look at that one. That's a jack. We got a jack on and a bunch of bait. That's the reason that one's fighting so hard. You got a jack too. See, that's different from the Spanish mackerel. Okay, no, we don't normally keep these and eat these. They're just for fun. Fling them in there. Fling them in. There we go. Jack guy, this baby. Yes, sir! Jack's on the planers and spoons. Double header. Double header. We got twins. One on red, one on green. All right. Hold that line. Now, we usually don't keep these. They don't have a whole lot of superfood value. Okay. So that's just what I thought there was going to be Spanish coming through there. It turns out to be All right, right, Jack's. For about four or five count when, you, when the planer hits the water. You let her out. Double jack hook up in a school of bait. We did have a Spanish. We got a Spanish on our first drag. There you teach these guys how to do this back here, and then all I have to do is drive. <laughs> Let's go back through them again. Double header again. Doing the troll. Pulling the hardware. That's what the old schoolers call it. Man, them fish fight. Okay, stop right there. Bring it in that forward pull holder. See, I maintain a little steerage here, a little going forward. Double, double header on the jacks again. Woo! Man, look at these sons of guns. That's about an 85 pound fish right there now. shot of Mr. Jack. Good sized jacks. That's what they're eating right there, folks. Little glass minnows. And it looks just like our little spoon. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, you can chuck them. I did watch a video last night about a guy that ate those and he did something with them and all this. But believe me, I don't know if we want to go through all that. <laughs> I want to go fish takes my stress away I wanna go fishing Try and cast my blues away I wanna go fishing I don't want to watch the clock I wanna go fishing I don't ever wanna stop Well hey folks, welcome to the Wolf Den. One more time, I'm gonna show you what we were doing in that fishing video footage, you may have a little bit of an idea, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you, explain it to you, show you the uh, hardware that we use, the type of tackle, and the reason why uh, we do what we were doing in that video, which was trolling planers and spoons. Alright, well welcome back folks. What I don't understand is how things have changed over time. Nobody does, hardly at all, what we were just doing in that fishing uh, footage. And that was trolling the inlet for Spanish mackerel. We actually ended up getting into more jacks than we did Spanish mackerel. But I remember years and years ago when the Spanish first arrived 
coming up the beach, and they arrived at our inlet, the Mayport Jetties, where the St. John's River dumps them to the Atlantic Ocean. You'd go out there on a weekend, and everybody would be trolling and catching Spanish mackerel and everything. And then you'd see people afterwards and talk about how many they got, and people would take their kids out and their their relatives and have a boat boatload of people and just have a great time catching Spanish and whatever else on planers and spoons. Well, it's a lost art. It's just like my float rig fishing that I do. Only old old timers and people sort of in the know do it anymore. Everything's changed because why? Oh, well, you got, you know, these... Uh, Trolling motors and all this power pole, all this stuff that I don't know has just changed the entire scenery of local fishing here in Northeast Florida. I've seen the change. People just don't even do things anymore. Oh, is it old school? I guess, but guess what? Old school still works. And we had a ball there for about an hour and a half, two hours, just smoking around the inlet. And catching these jacks, I mean, they were fighting hard, you know, and um, you'd go out there and get into the Spanish mackerel. Sometimes you catch other fish even. Uh, so I'm going to show you, sitting here in the wolf den, what we were actually using. This is what I call my pull in the hardware box. This goes on the boat in the spring, and it doesn't come off the boat until winter time. And it's a nice little waterproof case. And I keep all my planer and spoon trolling stuff. If you don't know what a planer is, then I'm glad you're here because you need to know. This is a small planer for just doing what we were doing. Okay, and you buy them in different sizes. You really don't need ones more than about this size. Sea Striker makes them, Drone makes them. This one here is a Sea Striker number one. That is a number one planer. What changes in planers is the size of this plate. Okay, here's a larger one. All right, I keep a few larger, and I keep a few smaller. Here's one that's an, uh, an old sea striker, and the reason I can tell is it's got a swivel there versus this ring. We go. Here's a couple more Sea Striker number twos. So you have a one, and then you got a two, which is about twice the size. You really never need to go any bigger than this, just when you're coastally uh, trolling planers and spoons for Spanish mackerel and jacks, blues, uh, well, some other fish have been caught, king mackerel. Um, I mean, just it's just a way of getting those fish that are attacking uh, small minnows and things like that. Now, to start at A and try to work myself to Z, you saw us doing it. It was fun. Here's part of the hardware, and I'm going to explain how this works in a moment. Then, what we use is the old... Uh, but, they, but back in the day, now there's all kinds of knockoffs, and that's what this is. This is a bag o' knockoffs. And this is the little spoon that we use right here. Okay, it's got a little green bead, a little green tape. You, mentioned, you saw maybe in the video how I mentioned we got one on green and one on red. Well, they also come with a little red bead on it. And they come with no bead at all. Alright, so 
There's the differences. This one, the hook broke. Broke off of it. I gotta put a hook on there. But these are knockoffs that I got on eBay. Just because many times you can just burn through these, okay? Um, the fish kind of hit it in front and they clip it off, things like that. So I got a whole bag of different little, what you would refer to as Clark spoons. Alright, let me put these back in here. I always keep some heavy mono. Well, this is actually Mason hard type nylon. I might end up sometimes using that. I keep a bunch of swivels and little quick clips. Alright. Here's some more just snap swivels. And just sometimes, not that I use this hardly at all, but just to keep on hand, I, I carry a bunch of these uh, little black nylon leaders with a snap on them. Just to have them. I don't like using wire at all, but I just keep this in just just keep this stuff handy. That's all. So here is a completely rigged and all just twirled up, ready for storage. Planer and spoon. This is what we were using. Here's the red. Look at that hook's bent. And here's the one that was the green. So, let me show you the tackle that we use and how you set this up. Alright folks, I'm out here in my, uh, at the boat and what I have is I'm going to try to simulate how you're going to set up your planer and your spoon. Here's my rod. I got it in a rod holder. Okay. I use my catfish rods and this is one of the just plain old Graphite Triton 100s, level wine star drag. All right, we got to pretty much get the drag down pretty tight because the planer is going to put some severe pressure on the rod. So you can see the rods up there like that. Okay, and I tie off my planer. Here's my planer, so you can see it up against the boat here. Okay, and what you're going to do is this is the tripped position. This is the actual position in which you're going to fish it. Okay. So off of this comes some mono. And then way back here, this is actually kind of long, is my, there it is, up against the garage door. There's my spoon with a loop knot in it. All right. So you don't have to go this far. You don't have to go. This is, this is almost like seven eight feet between the planer and all the way down here to my spoon but what you're going to do is you pick up your rod and you drop this in the water and since it's already set at that position it's going to hit the water and it's going to dive okay and you are going to do a maybe a five potato count for potato count. You're going to let line off and it's going to come to the back of the boat when it goes in the water and it's going to go into the water and it's going to plane down. It's going to put a massive bend in your rod if you can see that. Okay? Putting a massive bend in the rod. So you've got to have you've got to have a decent sturdy rod. Okay? And it's going to bend your rod over like that. Okay, see how the rod's bent over. And you got to have your drag set pretty tight. This isn't super sport fishing. This is super catching fish. So this is going to plane down and trail behind it. I'm trying to hold the camera. I'm going to do this at the same time. Okay. So off of this right here you're gonna have your spoon going out so then as this is diving hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to do all this and hold the camera 
this is diving behind your boat. Do not set this planer out an acre behind your boat. Okay? You want this, like I said, maybe a four or five count. Okay? So the planer would maybe actually be diving down behind your boat in the water. Maybe right behind your engine, you know, 15 feet behind your engine, maybe. And what this enables to do is this holds down real secure, real tight, putting that bend in the rod, trailing your spoon, and you go fast. 12, 1400, 1800 RPM on an engine like my Suzuki, okay? You'll notice that the faster you go, you can vary your speeds, and the faster you go, you can make tight turns, and that's what you want to do. So when the fish, let's try this again. So as this is diving, it's down in the water, your rod tip will be completely bent over. When the fish strikes your spoon, this pops and goes straight. It literally drives the fish to the top of the water, and you'll notice your rod will, will come up straight, okay? And you'll literally just have a Spanish or a Jack or a Blue or a whatever else over here on the end of your uh, on your on your spoon. So what you do then is you bring this up, like I was having those guys do in the video. You bring this up until it just comes out of the water. Okay, I had them taking the rod. And they were taking the rod after the fish was on, and they were taking it up, and they were going to this forward pole holder, okay? And then they would grab, <coughs> excuse me, they would grab the planer, lift it in the boat, and then from there, they hand line, hand line the fish into the boat. So let me get up inside the boat and show you. I actually, I know I need to go through all this while on the water, but I didn't have time to do it the other day uh, with, those, with those guys to stop and do an instructional video. So your rod's back here. The planer will trip with the fish on it. You gotta pick it up, you reel on it, the planer pops out of the water, Okay, or comes up to the, pops right out of the water. What I had them doing is bringing this up to the forward pole holder, grabbing the planer, which would be about down here. You bring the planer in, they would set the planer down like this, and you could hand line the fish up and drop them. If it's Spanish mackerel, you just open a cooler right here. That's what I do. Just have an open cooler because this is by the numbers. This isn't for, oh, light tackle with your little spinning reel and all that hooey. You're gonna have to use a, this is a medium heavy catfish rod and a decent reel with some serious drag, okay? So then we would just have the open cooler. You can grab the spoon. You can usually just shake off your Spanish mackerel, your jack, your bluefish, whatever. You take your spoon, you throw it back in the water. Now your planer, you can see, is sitting there and it's in the ready to go position. You drop your planer in the water, let it go behind the boat, hit it, reel down, hit it. One potato, two potato, three potato, four potato, five potato, boom. Put it in this rod holder. And then the boat just keeps continuing to go. And you sit here and you watch your rod tip. And at the time, how you're trolling these is you're never just going straight. You go and you're turning and turning. And you see a school of bait. And you whip over through the bait and you do a circle or something like that. right? Because every time you turn, one planer goes deeper, one comes up shallower. Shallower on the outside deeper on the inside.
So then you can just burn circles. And I'm talking, you're moving pretty quick. Okay? The neat thing about this whole deal is, is if you're offshore, let's say, as I commonly do, I see an entire school of Spanish mackerel or something pop up on the surface going after little, little tiny baits or bonita. Oh, bonita. I mean, there's built-in bottom fishing bait, everything. Little football bonitas or something like that. You have your planers and spoons, you've got your rod, you tie on that planer, you drop it, and you, you just hit it and start doing some circles and going around those baits, and man, can you fill up a box of fish real fast. So I'm sorry that this isn't an on-the-water thing uh, showing you, but I kind of hope you get the idea. If not, please just ask questions, okay? But what you don't do is you don't pull this planer all the way up like this, okay, and then think, okay, that you're going to do all this with a fish on it, with a planer up here and all this, and try to stick it in a rod holder. you got to think when you're doing this. Okay, don't have this planer up here. You want your planer to be down further down here where you can grab it. All right, we're back in the wolf den here. So, I usually have braid on all of my reels. So what I end up doing, just as a shock leader, and I do this when I'm bottom fishing or anything else, is coming off of my braid off of my reel. I'll usually run a 40 to 50 pound shock leader down here and I use, you know, a double uni knot or something like that right here. So then, in all reality, probably you'd want a snap swivel coming off of your shock leader, okay, onto here so you can just clip this on and off real fast, okay, just a regular snap, it's not no big giant offshore thing or anything like that, but still, these snap swivels are, oh, uh, let's see, they're like a hundred pound stainless steel. Um, I don't, they're not really saying the size here. Stainless steel snap swivels, hundred pound, 50 pack. Okay, somewhere around there, hundred pound, 80 pound. All right. That's what you'd really want, coming from here. Going from your, your uh, shock leader, going from your rod tip to here, you'd want to probably have a swivel there. Then here, on the trailing end of your planer, you want that same size snap swivel. And if you can go to ball bearing, all the better. Okay. Then the line going to my spoon. I use, I think this is probably about 40 pound, okay, and it served us just perfectly well um, in that video. 40 pound, you don't have to use fluorocarbon, you don't have to use anything. I think this is 40 pound pink Andy line, all right. And at the end, you can use another snap swivel if you want. Me, I just make a loop knot so my spoon can really move around. And we don't have it. We never had any problems with it getting clipped off or, or anything really. So that's sort of how you set it up. And then when you're done, you can unhook it. You take your mono leader. You wrap it around your planer, and you throw it in your box until next time. But you can catch Spanish offshore. You can catch uh, Bonita. You bluefish, jack revals, the real thing is Spanish mackerel. That's what we're always going for when we're trolling for these, trolling these, and it's fun. My God, you'd get a, I had a uh, charter one time where it was three Cub Scouts and a grandpa and me, all right? And these Spanish were thick as fleas around the jetties, and we were trolling back and forth around the jetty rocks and up and down the rip line between where the dark water and the green water are hitting on a fallen tide. And we were catching one after another, and these kids had so much fun. They were actually 
I gave them, okay, it's your turn. Then it's your turn. Then it's your turn. Then it's your turn. After that, after a while, that all went out. These kids were fighting for the rod and they're cranking them in and everything. And um, give a shout out to Mark, Mark Williams. He taught me how to do this. This is um, old school. This isn't this newfangled stuff. You're not going to go, you can go casting for these. But if you're taking your mother out and you want to go catch some fish and you want some hardcore fast action, man, this is the way to do it. Old school still works. And I don't understand, I just don't get it, why none of the charter boats around today do it. Just like none of these guys will go and take a five-pound box of cigar minnows and go catch kingfish, you know, on the reefs. All you need to catch kingfish is a five-pound box of cigar minnows, some cigar minnow, like, weighted head um, kingfish rigs. You've got to put a little weight in front of them. Learn how to break up that cigar minnow, make his tail wag like he's about to come off the hook, okay? Two downriggers. I see these guys with one. Two downriggers. Boom, one 30 feet, one 45 feet, boom, 1,200 RPM. You can smoke the kingfish. I've done it with cigar minnows and caught monster Spanish mackerel on the beach. When we say the beach, we mean, you know, 30, 40 feet of water out off the surf. Okay. I've done this. You control these down the surf, outside the surf. Um, you can catch probably pompano on these. You can catch... Maybe a whiting. It depends on how fast you're going to go. Um, I've heard of redfish caught off of these while trolling on planers. Okay, so old school never goes out of out of uh, style. And you take a regular inshore rod, a kingfish rod, any trolling rod will do. No little spinners. You don't want little spinners because you're going to be bowing over. Even that planer right there is going to bow over this ugly stick catfish rod, okay? And you want to go even deeper, then you bump up your, your, um, your planer size. This will go even deeper. There's plenty of uh, charts online about uh, you can find, and uh, if I can find one too, I've seen them, where at X number of feet, Behind the boat, this dives X number of feet deep. Same thing with the smaller one. X number of feet behind the boat, this goes X number of feet deep. So that's the whole objective of planers. People were pulling these long before any downriggers. Long, long, long before downriggers. And downriggers are great. They're really great. But for me, I don't, I don't really do any super trolling offshore. So I keep this box handy. If I am offshore and I see them Spanish or something blistering the top of the water and getting on those glass meadows, man, you can bet I'm putting on what we call the hardware, and I'm going to go buzz through them and catch some. These old school techniques, like my float rig fishing and this, it all works. So I'll get, I'll probably do another video about literally being on the water and showing you how this works. But this was just something that was really on my mind. I've been busy as hell. I actually took off today's Sunday. I took today off and tomorrow because I got things I kind of do during normal business hours. Like I've got mail and packages sitting at the post office that they wouldn't deliver without a signature and I can't even get, okay, until Monday morning. So... There you go. That's a little bit of called pulling the hardware. Planers and spoons. You can find these. They're little, you can find knockoffs or you can buy the real deal, which is the Clark spoons. And most of these are going to be either the drone or Sea Striker brand planers. I would say always get yourself three or four of the number ones and um, a handful of these. And you're good to go. You can burn around, set yourself up a box here where you got your your bag of spoons, you got your uh, snaps, snap swivels, and keep that handy on your boat. As soon as you look out and you see 
Spanish flying through the air, go get on them. Go get on them. Thanks for watching. I hope this does something. And um, like I said, I, I turned the camera on a little bit the other day when we were doing this, and then it got me thinking why I'm seeing all this action going on at the inlet. And, and nobody's, nobody's doing anything. Boat's just flying by, just flying by. Instantaneous gratification. That's what I call it. My customers had fish in the box, in the boat, in the first, eh, three, four minutes of when we got to the inlet. I, I went, okay, here's what we're going to do. I tied one of these on, dropped it in water. Boom, instantly had a nice Spanish about that big. Okay. And then all of a sudden we saw all that bait and the jacks blistering them. And we we're just flying through them, hooking, double hooking those jacks just for fun. Two people from Tennessee, hey, they worked up a sweat. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.